Hey, welcome back to Dynamic Alignment Bodywork. Happy Friday. This is Liam, and uh, as always, in today's video, I want to let's talk about and have a little lesson in anatomy in uh, the head, jaw, and neck, and in particular how that can relate to headaches. Um, I've been having, as often happens in this room, sort of um, there's like themes, it seems like, and waves, and I've been getting a lot of people coming in with headaches lately. So I wanted to share a few things that I found really helpful, um, again, and as often, both in myself, in sort of um, just as another person, and in treating people in this room, uh, a few things I found helpful in relieving headaches, particularly tension um, kind of headaches. I guess to distinguish those headaches between uh, like a migraine or something else that might have a more sort of overtly physiological cause and by that I mean like a migraine trigger or if you have a, a food allergy and that's ending up as, as head and neck pain. There can be lots and lots of causes but one uh, little test is to just treat it like it's sort of a tension headache which it often is in our culture um, and then if it helps then you know then you have something else in your in your toolkit either way. So. Uh, a few things we'll cover today is one, a light uh, trigger point release. I'll go over what that is. And then talking about uh, neural tension and how to release that, particularly around the eyes and the jaw and stuff that feeds right into the neck. And that goes right into our um, anatomy of what we're talking about today. Obviously, we have our very important organ upstairs here inside the cranium, our brains, and then uh, a lot of nerve tissue and a lot of nerve information coming out um, all along the spine really, but especially in these first few vertebra. This whole juncture is really, really important. Um, so important, in fact, that there's a whole uh, division of chiropractic. It's a uh, NUCA, or the National Upper Cervical, this is the cervical spine, Upper Cervical Chiropractors Association. Um, so, you know, not to say we should ascribe to that or not, but just to sort of point to its importance. You know, there's not a mid-back chiropractic association, right? And it has to do, they manipulate one joint, as I understand it, and that's between the neck and the skull. So a lot of information happening here, and a lot that is really intimately linked to, let's start with the eyes, actually, intimately linked to our eyesight. If you think about our evolution and, you know, hunter-gatherer times or when we're, there were more natural predators coming for us, um, there are now, you know, walking along and when we needed to fix our eyesight on something, the eye locking had a lot to do with and was really linked with the base of the skull. So there would be this like, kunk, so I could lock my eyesight. And then when that was done, Organically, what tends to happen if we don't sort of unlearn from it is our eyesight broadens and we take in a much peripheral. So if you're sensitive, you can even sense that. If you focus in on something, you can kind of feel what happens to the musculature in your neck. And then looking in the same direction, if you soften your vision, you might even feel like, ah, oh, like this literally loosens up. When I have people on the table, I'll be feeling these muscles and I'll have them look their eyes different directions and can actually feel the musculature respond underneath my fingertips. It's pretty light, but it's definitely there. And little changes make a big difference. So tip one for tension headaches is allow your eye. Okay, I just had to free up some space on my phone. Hopefully this works. Um, talking about eyesight and the function and um, yeah, why we, how that came to evolve that these two were so intimately linked. So allowing your vision to soften into periphery, especially when we stare at a computer or something written all day, just little breaks where you not only look up, but look up and actively in, and internally like oh, release your vision and kind of take in the whole room, turn on your peripheral vision more. Um, that can be really helpful, sort of, especially with chronic conditions. If you get headaches a lot, that can be a good part of your rem remedy, your remedial approach throughout the day. Um, as long as we're talking about that kind of feeling, before we go into a trigger point, let's talk about the jaw in the same way. Um, a lot of times, or initially when I heard like relax the jaw, you know, when I was a kid or in, in college, I would think like, I would imagine the jaw as a hinge joint, you know, which it is, and I would think relax, like let it fall. 
though I think a much more helpful imagery, especially when we're talking about, you know, kind of this like uh, low grade tension that we carry around, which usually isn't that intense. It's like, but it's low grade, but the same idea. It's imagining a depth to that relaxation. So uh, including your tongue, you know, your eyes, but really this whole ring here. So relaxing your jaw, not only letting it fall, like it's locked jaw, I can still do this and maintain a lot of tension here. So I allow it to, that opening to drop back into the back of my head, which I can even do with my mouth closed. So that's like relaxing the jaw. It doesn't look like much. Like a lot of these videos, it doesn't actually look like much in terms of a movement, but give it a try and be gentle with yourself and with the process if it doesn't come right away. And allowing that lying down can help. Allowing your eyes to relax with the depth and even open and your jaw to relax with the depth. Last thing, and this, this can be a great um, acute remedy for uh, chronic headaches, aside from a warm pack, I did, should mention that, like a warm rice pillow can feel really nice. Heat can get blood flowing, can make some kinds of headaches worse. But again, if heat intuitively sounds good, or if you're not sure, give it a try. Uh, that can help promote blood flow and these kind of chronically tight, contracted muscles. Okay, I had to make more surge again. Hopefully this will wrap it up. Um, so last thing we're going to talk about is a self, oh yeah, heat, right? So into that, uh, um, a trigger point release. And if you're not familiar, trigger points are uh, taut bands of muscle that when you push on them are characterized by radiating elsewhere. So there's lots of like common places for trigger points all over the body. And you may well have experienced one if you've had a massage before. Someone poking in, you're like, I'm poking here, but I feel it in my back or in my abdominals or somewhere else. So one is, it can be really nice, I find it kind of hard to do self-release. You'll want to do this lying down. Or if you have a partner or a friend, you can guide them to this. And a lot of times, even just a little pressure can help sort of release uh, the whole head and be helpful and also sort of cue that deeper jaw relaxation, that deeper eye relaxation we were talking about. So its location is um, right behind, there's this bone, there's this lump. A bone it's just behind that below right below the skull another landmark is we have this big thick muscle which attaches down called the sternocleidomastoid or SCM if you follow that up that attaches on this bone so just on the back side and like if I flex my head if I hold it there you can see it pop out especially if I pull towards I can feel it just behind that and I'm sort of pushing in and up Again, it'd be really hard to do standing because these muscles are engaged in keeping my head upright, but you could lie down and give this a try or guide someone's fingers there. I don't like smashing in right away, but you'll also want some substantial pressure. And I'm not putting it on the bone, but just below the bone. So our buddy here, here's the jaw, right? Here's that little lump. These muscles connect in. There's a whole band of them called the suboccipitals. This is the occipital ridge of the skull. So I'd be pushing like right in here. And it can feel nice, feel nice, feel nice. But if you've had that trigger point feel, it'll be like, oh, that's it. And hold that for a minute or two until that releases. And it can feel kind of nauseating. It can be a sign that you're doing it right, but nauseating in a really good way. Um, and yeah, that can be a really nice remedy. For, um, for tension headaches. So between heat, that trigger point release, again, while you're lying down, um, that ability to relax all these ocular muscles into the back of the neck and the jaw in the same way, taking little breaks throughout your workday, even for like 30 seconds, to let that kind of like depth of relaxation set in um, can be really, really helpful. I hope it helps you. See you soon.